Welcome back to the desk. We have the champion select for Riddle versus Dusty. I hope you guys can see I'm it. I'm leaning over here at the desk. I, I, yeah. I can I see, see it, it. so let's see what I happens. See what it's it's they can read, well, they can't read, but they can sort of like just being rude is what they're being. So you. Nidalee will be banned. Yeah, there you go. Sorry, I'm sorry, okay. can, I, can I start here? Because he said, we're going to ban the Nidalee, but we don't care about anything else really. Well, and, and then, then okay. Diana. Already banned. Two yeah. of, uh, of MC's champions. What, I, what, what I'll say is, at least on, at least because Riddle on red side, you could Diana Yasuo want to. And I, I can understand, like, just get rid of one of the half, the, like, the dangerous half of that combo, knowing that MC plays as well. Tom Kench away from Nukes, I like it. I mean, the rel away from you know FTG what? is such a big I think Hecarim needs to, to be banned right Yeah, away. that's the first pick, otherwise, MC, there we go. Yeah. 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 MC said it as well, it's extremely dangerous. Viking has sported the Hecarim. And right now, you've got the Zinza, you've got the Lee Sin. You get to pick whatever you want, right? Um, at this point, Jinx, Rise, let's get traded. Uh, Rise is also open at this point. You can be one Jinx. Yeah. It's, it's the typical for the NLC right now. It's across the world as well. I still call back to those LPL stats, right? Where they say, like, look, Jinx has been played like 70 more games than any other AD carry. Like, flat out. It's yeah. just the way it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jin oh. Oh. Okay, Fatty Chan. Does that mean we can rumble? That's a rumble. That's there a it rumble. is. Jin rumble. So good. Every time Fatty Chan locks in Jin, you know it's a rumble in the jungle, baby. Now it's getting exciting because you can you can lock in Javan mm -hmm. into the rumble, lock him in, kill him really quickly. We're talking right? about that. We're yeah. talking about yep. that as well. Viking does play a lot of Javan. Uh, if you want to, you can go with the more traditional, you know, Zinzel to play the fights later okay. on. The Volibear okay. doesn't lose to pretty much any champion uh, in the game, in the trades and the fights. So I think I think Viking is pretty good. I think even if you don't pick jungle here, you're pretty good to choose your matchup later on in the draft because yeah. not everything can be banned out. I think Nautilus makes a lot of sense for FGG as well. It's another champion he feels pretty comfortable on, easy engaged. Also, Jin Rumble. If you can get close enough for a depth charge, they're gonna have a nasty time. If you add in the, vo the volley there as well, you can try and dive beyond their active range, even if they are quite long range to begin with. You can close the distance pretty well. Uh, and also they take it away from Nukes because Nukes Great. played Nautilus together with the Rumble, and I think that duel was absolutely deadly because you can see see somebody for so long that the carpet will burn all of your HP off. So that was a really good shout right there. I'm wondering maybe we can see something like a Leona maybe locked in uh, together with the. You got AP? You cute. put AD in That's the mid. You were Oh, oh this is going to be good. I mean, both teams, like, I feel Dusty's a bit more meta in inverted commas but it's still pretty comfortable for them that riddle that's just pure comfort you know what i'm, get, I'm getting deal. very jealous of these guys sitting behind the caster desk it right should now be a banger. it should be a banger <laughs> we talked about this it's going to be a banger we, we are hoping for at least five games and there we go now i have to focus on the mid lane obviously vex yeah. would be annoying to play without elia so you gotta I'm take it away also maybe leblanc because backlands leblanc oh, has been blanc. very dangerous he's Kali a Kali has also yeah. been very dangerous so take out maybe one of the two assassins that backland might want to play in mid also you can maybe take the Akali and put it top yourself. Not the best together with the Rumble. I'm expecting something uh, maybe like the Shen even, because it's yeah, worked really well for Yeah, true. Like, Kekta has liked that. The only thing I'll say is there is still a world, but that really does get flexed. While I'm yes. pretty much assuming it's Loki, there is like the draft possibility there, and it is playoffs. So but, it, but it does mean that like, this is playoffs. People often do this where you say, okay, well, it's been slow queue out through that whole, whole, whole season. He's famous for it. But you can definitely look to, to make things difficult there. And there's the there long ban. I don't, I don't, I like that a lot, as you said. And now maybe a Shen ban here, honestly. Another one of those kind of weak side affect the map top laners. And also, nah might not be bad either. Yeah, and also, like, you take out the, the chance to be affected on the other side of the map from globals, right? Because when you have a Jinx lane together with an Nautilus, you usually want to shove it in really early. And then if you have these globals, we've seen what's happened to Dusty, like in the regular split, where they had a Gangplank ruin their plans completely. So I wouldn't blame them if they take something even like okay. the Orn or the Karma. Okay, the Karma. No, 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 so Kect has taken that top and did so to kind of surprise Excel actually, in a way that they weren't necessarily expecting them up for the Trindamir into it. It really didn't work in the long run. Um, so I now have questions, what does he want to go for here? I mean, there's Orn, there's Set was not what I was expecting. That could well be support. I love that, I love that, I love that, I love that, I love that. Yes. Set is the traditional reply into the Volibear. Volibear is a champion that loves building HP. His HP bar is already pretty high to begin with. So Thank you for the nuke. So the second he dives in, you just grab him, you throw him back out. It's just a traditional reply to Volibear. And I really like the fact that Kex is actually uh, able to pull it out. Now I'm saying Kex, obviously it is also a flex. It can't, we have seen it yes, before. Yeah. It works into the Nautilus as well. So I don't know. 
I don't know if they want to do that there or they're just waiting to see like the last two picks from the sort of Dusty uh, to see if they want to lock in something like a Leona in the mix, right? But Backland, we talked about his LeBlanc, we talked about his Akali. Not both could be banned out here, okay. so he's going to resort to the other one. And uh, A-Leafs, uh, Orn, Gragas or Aatrox, all free for him to choose from. He had segments specifically for the Gragas of a -Leaf. It makes sense if he picks it, but none is available as well. And this is a naughty pick into the top lane. It can deal with mostly anything. And there you go. On the other side, now we can finally see where Seth is going to be. The thing is, you can swap the Aurelia top now. You can. Put the Seth support. Because well, yeah. Aurelia smashes mini, it's, mini now. It's, it's, it's a horrible and then, and then And then you put Seth down in the bot lane. And then but you even get in the mid? Okay. Or in the mid, yeah. <sighs> uh, like, like, this is a standard hover so I, I, for this team. So I'm going to wait know. until I see it locked in. Now will be the time to do it. Love Malphite. That, makes a lot more sense. That is a lot of, like, between Set and Malphite, you have got ways to go in. You've got the Jin and the Rumble who can follow up from range with the artillery. Aurelia gets to dive over the burning corpses that are left. You see how Riddle's comp plays. The only thing I'll say is, like, Jinx and then the the Akali, there we go, took me a second. Like, like, like that's Dusty Comfort 101 there. So, they I mean, they've got very standard. They can definitely play this if those champions get fed. Um, I just really like the fact that they have Jin here because Akali mm -hmm. should technically never be able to reach Jin. You've got four players that want to play in your face. I think Akali's target right here will most likely be the Rumble. Try to get MC out that's of the picture fair. real quickly. You open the curtain call, and then if somebody doesn't die in the equalizer, MC is. We'll finish screwed. it up. Yeah. Yeah. Before we jump into a game, Predictions. Who do you think is going to win? For you, initialize to start off. Got to be fast. I think it's Riddle's comp I prefer personally. What about you? It's MC Rumble, baby. Okay, so two for oh, I would say. Without further ado, let's toss it to the casters. Viper and alongside Goldberg. Let's kick this action. Well, I mean, I just heard what the casters have predicted. Uh huh. I think that we're on a different page to them. Are we though? Well. Why don't you? Okay, so they. Okay, no, 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 no. Go on, yeah. But Dusty's composition. Honestly, I, uh, I, I, I kind of agree with you to some extent here because I'm looking at the conversation. Uh, a composition. As soon as I saw the Aurelia get locked mm. in, I was explaining to you as well that 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 has to be a Kali. Backland currently 100% win rate on the champion. I think there's loads of possibilities to find early action in this game from the mid lane, um, specifically because we're looking at two champions that quite often find kill pressure at level six. But in this matchup, you can find it pre as well and then it's going to be influenced by the junglers volley bear coming in disabling the tower uh, or the synergy as well from mc trying to come in long range with the rumble uh, there's a lot of different intricacies and different matchups to take a look at in this game well, I mean, we'll have plenty of time to go into all of that nice sky here at summoner's rift for our first game of the day of course best of five uh, one thing i wondered though as we see people queuing up on the top side riddle just waiting to see if anything's going to happen are Crosby saying we should be getting at least five games? How do we get more than five games? Well, we need more of this because this is something that goes back and forth and might very well come down to execution. So I think this is good so far and I love it because I know we're going to be getting more adaptive mm. um, responses in draft fifth the further we, we move into the game. It might be that now Backlund is going to be completely popping off on the Akali. That might be an issue for them later down the line and therefore they decide to ban it or vice versa with slow Q's Aurelio, which I mean slow Q as a player in regular season, Barely visible, made a lot of mm. basic mistakes, super inconsistent. Slow Pew, now towards playoffs, a completely different beast. We saw what he did against MNS. MNS, who by many was regarded the best mid laner in the league. So, uh, Riddle, definitely a scary playoff form they've have obtained so far. Absolutely, definitely been the giant killers. David versus Goliath has been the storyline that we've been talking about with this team. But of course, Dusty, also, we heard from the interview, they want to be getting down towards Bifrost, getting towards those European Masters places, and have had a really strong showing dismantling the Nier in their first matchup. And now you can see creeps are clashing, people are ready, and it's time to get down to business. So let's talk a little bit what we want to see here in the early game. We have Viking pathing from top down towards bottom side, and I think that is the point of attack in the early game from Dusty. You're playing against a very immobile AD carry in the Jin. Jin. He's great once he gets out of lane. He gets to be facilitating. You have the composition with a rumble where you get to be long range. The follow up you get from a Malphite, nukes on the set, and slow Q and Aurelia jumping in. But it's about getting to that point. And Dusty, they want to make sure you don't get to that point easily. They want to make sure that you're punishing an AD carry with low agency at his kid. 
Absolutely, and with the Volley Bay, you do have early tools to do just that. On the bot side, you can see skipping over those Raptors going straight towards the red. He's got priority in the bot lane, so could look to get something going. And of course, at level six, the Volley Bay is going to make diving very, very easy. On the other side, Riddle, you've got to imagine, is it a case of them just wanting to sit back a little bit, not giving an opening to Dusty so they can get towards that really strong team fight you talked about? I definitely about? think so, because you don't actually have a lot of pushing lanes in the early game. Yeah. You can see it here. Now into Malphite. Malphite doesn't get to do a lot. You'll have good trading patterns every time you're curious around, and that's because you've opted for the comic in your runes. So you kind of mm. just throw your Q, get the poke damage down, back off. But once it comes to hitting the minions, it's a range into melee. Now it's going to be taking control of the lane. Uh, I was curious to see what Venson FGG was going to do with that bot lane because they had a wave three crash, but they didn't really use this to get out of Rome to get inside on the scuttle. They just use it to keep the pressure down on Riddle's bot lane. And Riddle's bot lane, quite frankly, they're fine with this. So we're looking for the point where Dusty finally decides that they want to attack around this bot side, but we're speaking about bot. We might mm. have to change it around and say top. Yeah, Viking's hanging around. He's got that dog buff. He has moved actually back towards the top side to find Kex out on the mouth. He needs to be a little bit careful. He doesn't go out of position, but just wards up in the tribe, which won't split the bear who's hanging out behind the tower. But Viking spending a decent amount of time. That bot skull's there. Ward is down, and then Mechana is close to getting obtained. He might actually cancel his recall and go for it. And yes, Viperoon, I do believe oh, he's, he's done so. in for it. He didn't look for the stun. The mouth fight's pretty big, but there's the Mechana. As you said, the stun, the flash, the damage is there. And it's going to be first blood going to Viking. Easy ass from Dusty. Brilliant layering from CC by Viking, starting it all off with the flash queue. Easy from Aleph to follow up with the W stun from now, and that's just the first plot. Really only of the expense of a flash. Mm. MC still out on his second clear now, have already recalled. Let's see if he can do anything to Backlund. Nice stun, but Backlund's in the shroud and can just dive away. MC, of course, getting that bottom lane scuttle crab as FGG holding the fort alone, as we see Venza already going back for that cull, which is always a very nice first back for the Jinx, just to get a little bit more investment. Exactly, and that's also why the early game, you know, itself is a little bit difficult from Riddle getting to that point, because you don't actually have a lot of pushing lanes. Mm. Yes, you get to work around with the Aurelia, but actually pre-6, not the best one to have a roaming around the map. Um, so Volibear with Viking here actually has a great time. You could have set something up down towards the bot side, or you did it up towards the top side, as we just saw. And in turn, your bot lane is really not in danger. They crashed the wave. Venza just went for a recall himself. Got a little bit of an item advantage. And now he can crash the wave once again. You can set FGG out to roam just a little bit, clear out some vision in your own jungle, and you can try and attack another map. Uh, point of a attack, rather, on the map again. Something interesting to note as well, we've just seen Sloku go for that reset, but he's already gone back once. This is his second back, just getting back into lane. Backland has had plenty more time, but it's only four farm up right now but will be coming in with parity, of course, going for those immediate sort boosts, wants to get that mobility about. This is interesting. So, Slow Q currently has set a freeze upon Backlund. Mm. Backlund just used his Flare uh, Shuriken Toss, and he doesn't actually have too much vision around. Nukes MC hovering around as well. This could be dangerous. It's going to be a proper skirmish. It's going to be a 2v3 if it kicks off, but MC will be spotted out on a ward, so you've got to imagine Backlund giving some respect to that side of the map, and has to just hit level 6 as well for a little bit more damage. But... But Backland right now does need to be careful because is extending without too much coverage. Having FGG will definitely help because we know how strong Nautilus can be in these early exchanges. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and just in general, a really scary champion. Sometimes we even see them not in for the shield bash, just for that extra damage when you put in the W. MC has been spotted out on the Crocs as well. They're trying to see if they wanted to threat another dive on the top side, but Kex this time around has obtained that unstoppable force. New Luke's going aggressive. in, grabbing into Venza, who will be able to move away, burning low with the Ignite. Needs to dodge out damage as much as he can. Fatican moving forward, needs to get that fourth shot. Finds FGG, but it's not going to be enough for anything. It's just going to be a bit of an exchange at the end of the day. Yeah, but good poke damage coming out from the Riddle bot lane, playing around that fourth bullet from Fatuchan as well. Jinx does well in these extended traits where she gets to prop the lethal tempo, but if she's too busy running away from a set, well, you can't really do that. Mm. So actually, brilliant trading down there. Now Riddle, they get rewarded. They get to crash the bot side. They can move up into the river, can use their pressure by just being in fog of war to allow Buckland being like, oh, I can't really step up. Now Luke's just going to be showing a bit of authority onto FGG as well. Of course, Nautilus being out of lame does mean that he's a level below for the time being. But it's interesting that Viking hasn't even tried to go bot yet, where we said, maybe, look, he's pathing down there because he wants to get the bot lane going as soon as possible. But he's loved being top side against Malphite, but now Kex has hit six. This gank isn't as 
lovely. Well, you say that. There's actually Ooh. two people coming nice up joining it. Backland is there. Nice ultimate away from Kex. I don't know if Akali's going to be able to get there. And the flash away. Maybe enough, but Aleph, one more auto should secure it. No, it won't, but the likes one will. And that's a kill going over to Aleph. Oh, Kex, he's not having a great time up towards that top side of the map. That's a huge wave he's going to be missing. You can already see the CS discrepancy mm. between the Nar and the Malphite. Even more plating going over to Dusty as well. And what is the response from the side of Riddle? They didn't even start up the Drake itself. And it's just Aleph finding a really nice Nar here. Kex not respecting the fact that there could be more people around in the area. Should have a sure unstoppable force immediately. Flash could have come out soon as well. But Aleph, once he sees the opportunity to flash forward, he seizes it and take the second kill for Dusty. Riddle moving down towards this dragon. Going to be starting that one up. MC going to try and get back some tempo as it's been all about Viking in these early stages. Up in that top side, Malphite has died twice. Of course, he's an engaged tank. He's going to be okay with having a little bit less gold. But the fact of the matter is, you've got a Gnar that's going to be coming online pretty soon. It's going to be terrifying in these team fights. And we've said how good Riddle are going to be in team fights. But we always talk about that on parity. If we can get a decent lead coming from Dusty, suddenly champions like Gnar and Viking are going to be absolutely terrifying bearing down on. Especially because Gnar and Akali is such tempo-based champions mm. as well. I'm not saying Aurelia really isn't, because she is for sure as well. But that just is a testimony to what kind of will happen if Aurelia uh, is the one that falls behind the curve. Backland gets to be the one who's part of the play all the time. I actually like what Dusty is doing here. I think they should just continue to create these topside skirmishes. Mm. Rather, either be by starting up the rift I'll try to contest Rift uh, Raptors instead as well. Whatever you can get, small leads on the map, neutral gold, take it while you have this little lead. And I really like that as well because you talk about them being tempo-based champions. The desk talks about these two teams being tempo-based teams. And in a best of five series, you come out strong in game number one, suddenly you're going into game number two. Like, yeah, this is going to be great. And we've spoken to both of these teams that are quietly confident, but they know and they respect their opposition. I mean, even MC in the interview just now was saying that he was so confident that was going to be a 3-0. and mm. And I'm not saying that Riddle is uh, he's out of this game, because no, by mm. any means, they still have a composition that can be quite deadly yes. if someone is getting caught. Even just backlung in a mid game can get grabbed out of the shroud by nukes at the correct time uh, and CC up together with Kex, but so far they just haven't been given an opportunity to go aggressive. And now Dusty, once again, topside, recalling with Kex. This allows Viking to just get a little bit aggressive, get that jungle intel. You seeing that the Raptors are down right now is a clear sign for the Dusty bot lane to then go, okay, he must be down towards the bot side instead then. We need to play a little bit safer. Now the question is, we've seen the Rift Hell picked up. I always love asking this question. Where should Viking be dropping this? Because I'm looking bot lane and saying, you haven't shown too much love. Is it time for a bit of an early Christmas present down there? Uh, it looks like it's going to be another Christmas present, not birthday. <laughs> what, how, how many holidays are there where you give gifts? I feel like Viking is very busy. Um, giving a lot of attention to Kex. His favorite child, clearly, just... Oh, definitely. Top, or least favorite child with what he's been doing to Kex so far this game, but is moving on oh, through no. the ultimate defense from the Malphite and Stumble Force, but he's going to be stopped right now. And Aleph picks up another. And this Dar is getting so much attention. This is going to be really, really problematic for Riddle. It's also just a difference between these two jungle champions because, yes, you can argue that MC is not as active as Viking is currently being, but it's also not the same pacing that the Rumble will have as a champion. You are waiting for level six. Speaking of these level sixes, Ooh, getting aggressive down towards the bot side. Benz is all right. MC moving on down. Has the equalize to throw it down the curtain. Cool and nice damage going down onto both members from Dusty. FGG is going to need to dodge this fourth shot. He can't, but the shield is enough. The deadly flash is flashed away from. FGG with the fancy feet survives as Viking moves on through a dive. That's a from can. This could be brave, but he gets Venza. He's looking to run away, but here comes Viking. If he can get the stun down, this could be Curtis. The ultimate forward, but a nice flash from the Jin. Fanican is moving for his life, but the the hero sacrifice coming on through from Nukes. Puts on a shield, looking towards FGG, can't find him, knows that his days are numbered, but is looking for the return kill. It's not going to come through, and it's going to be another kill to Viking. Honestly, Nukes, what a support, giving, giving away his life for Fatigen there. But in the end, it's still a little bit worth it for real, actually. Mm. They get that one for one. They get a kill on their AD carry. They get to push in the mid lane. Backline even loses the teleport. Um, so all in all, we were lacking a point of attack, but we said it, once the level six would come active for MC, especially down towards this Jin, that's where we started seeing them get aggressive. I mean, the damage here, you can see MC just clipping both of them and the four shots. FGG does so well to survive here, but just wasn't enough in the end. Honestly, I was ready for them to screw it up a little bit. FGG just flashing out of the way of the bullet. That was going to kill uh, Venser instead. Luckily, that was not the case, but Fatichun 
feeling confident, and uh, Viking just not expecting that Vatigen was going to be walking up, fourth shot in his AD carry in the face, just like that. Um, so he's forced to take a different route afterwards. They do pick up the kill. Nukes flashing forward, a little bit ambitious. In the end, trading out one for one, still decent, for real. Yeah, very nice. Also, actually, she's just holding that hook to make sure that he's oh, perfect execution. Power, but Nukes is going to need to be careful. Backland already picking up the first kill of the fight. Nice equilibrium to keep Dusty away from Nukes. If you see the last one, it goes wide. It doesn't hit anyone as Dusty are able just to walk away. Not the most impactful teleport we've ever seen from our Alpha. Oh, no, that's a point and click gone wrong. And once again, Backland showing up in the Akali. Let's see, though. Yeah, I think they're going to be able to get the kill onto this one. Backland has nowhere to go in the Shroud, and it will be MC securing the kill. I was just about to say, Backland once again, 100% win rate on the Akali, almost finding his solo queue on so slow queue, solo kill rather. And then he steps up just a little bit, but now Aleb picking up the first turret for himself. Rift Herald getting plates in the mid lane. Holdbreaker has been purchased. Mm. So Aleb is going to be a menace in the side lane. He can continue to do so. Aleb now with topside pushed in. Despite having built, Holdbreaker can try and join the rest of his team if they want to contest this Drake getting started off. But as it currently stands, the vision control is just in Riddle's favor. And it doesn't look like Dusty are in a position or want to contest this one. I don't even think they'll have the time. I think they're moving forward. They'll see it as it goes down. But that's going to be a second dragon going over to Riddle. We've got Mountain Soul, first one of the day which isn't the most impactful soul that we have in the League of Legends right now. But, you know, it's, it's good to start a little bit slower as we hit the 14-minute mark as well. So as plates fall off, let's have a quick check-in with the state of the game. Nice gold lead to Dusty, almost 3,000. And as you look at these champions with the gold leads that they got, look at top lane! <laughs> oh, I don't like that. I get it. Usually we go tanks. You know what? They don't have to spend that much gold on items. They, uh, they can chill a little bit. They have a cheap way of... Uh, of building them, but this uh, this Malphite, he's going AP as well. That's a lost chapter. Probably going to be built into an Everfrost as well. Uh, so it is definitely still some uh, some item components that will uh, mm. we'll have to wait a little bit before we get to that point with the amount of gold that Kex has accumulated for the time being. I mean, just it, it, you said ranged into melee, and I was like, yeah. That does make things a little bit When rough. I saw that matchup, I was like, that's great for now. You love that. Getting to proc the hyper procs, getting that W, just running around with the Q. It's such an easy matchup to play. But it's not even ranged versus melee. It's ranged and melee versus melee. Yeah, I mean, it's just uh, it's a fun matchup uh, if you're nah. not. Not if you're Malphite, especially not if Viking is not kept in check. And I felt like that was a little bit of what's gone wrong for Riddle already, mm. is the fact that Viking has not really been tracked as efficiently as he possibly could. We haven't really seen that aggressive vision. I would have loved if we maybe saw uh, Pink Ward being purchased yes. by Slowkill in the early game, especially because he had so much mid lane priority. See if we can get that up towards the top side on the river, or at least something that will spot, uh, spot Viking away. Because then, yes, I am losing 75 gold, but I'm also saving my top laner, and uh, you know that that might actually be more worth it. Top laners aren't worth 75 gold. Okay, no, you're probably never, right. never worth, never drop a wall if you're Fair enough. If you haven't noticed, we're not League of Legends. We're in a pause right now. Hopefully, we'll be getting a resolution to that very, very soon. But I want to just kind of talk about where we think this game is going to go next because we were thinking, hey, bot lane is going to be pretty interesting this game. You've got a clear victor down there. No one really got involved. There was MC making that one successful play where it was 1v1 trade. Viking was also around for that skirmish. But past that, we haven't really seen too much going on. Is this something that is going to explode in the near future? Because you've got Jin and you've got Jinx. These are two massively impactful champions. That's the thing, right? Because I, I, I'm looking at the map state as well, and, mm. and quite often have I seen a team get top turret as the first one. Um, and then you kind of go like, wait, we're not rotating around a bot laner. We're now having a champion that's got hole breaker. Mm. We don't want to play around him. We want to let him stay for himself. So I'm looking at Dusty, and I'm wondering, are you going to be making some creative rotation now where you're just sending your Nar down towards the bot side and you try to create skirmishes on the top side when second Herald spawns? I still think for Dusty, it's about creating skirmishes using the gold lead you have currently to just push uh, Riddle as far back as you can. Go invade their jungle camps on timers and from the side of Riddle, try to see how much of your own jungle you can actually retain because we've already talked about that composition. It spikes more when you get to play around the team fighting, but if you're going to be 3 to 4k be gold behind, it's going to be very difficult. You need to be relying on fighting some picks and a lot of this is going to come out from the vision control mm. and utilizing the CC you have in your, in, in your team fight composition. I mean, this is what we talked about as well with that second dragon going down because Riddle had the control over that area. They had the vision, but with top lane tower gone, with mid lane tower on 
I believe it was about two plates before it fell. There's a great opportunity there for Dusty to come on through and to open up the map. And as you say, move into the enemy jungle, start getting some work done, start squeezing the gold away. We're going to jump to a couple of highlights now just to see if you've just joined us. Don't worry, we've got you covered with some of the big action. And it's all been basically, let's kill top laner. Yeah, and I think they've been doing a great job at it, Viking and Aleph. Aleph, we've been so used to seeing him as the weak sider over the course of the split, especially because Dusty in the beginning was very much around Venser. Mm. I think they developed themselves as a roster where they have developed multiple threats in terms of what they want to play for. Uh, I think it's great to see that um, they're then able to utilize that on the top side. Albeit, I think Hex was being a little disrespectful with his usage of the Unstoppable Force. Um, but uh, other than that, just all in all, great early game from Dusty. Riddle trying to respond back now when they finally hit that level six down towards the bot side as well. And Vatican, of course, grabbing that kill does lose his support and both summoners in this exchange, but it's been very, very interesting to watch how the priority has been different from some of the stuff we've seen from these teams before. Because as you said, Aleph hasn't necessarily been the focal point with Avenza, who Initialize was saying, the biggest glow up in maybe NLC history from the start of the split. I think now. it was easy for Venza to look better than he did in the beginning due to the fact that Venza looked really bad. Yeah. In the beginning. Venza was, if you didn't watch NLC in the beginning, well, Venza was very known for just jumping into the back line. We, I kind of joked, uh, if you played TFT, that he had an assassin emblem on him because he would always just somehow, as a jinx or as an Aphelios, gale force into the enemy's back line and all of a sudden be piloting the fight from there. Uh, and now you finally have this AD carry. We see shine on Caitlyn just before playoffs as well. Mm -hmm. We've seen him shine on the Jinx. He's been more respectful. Um, he's being more aware of his positioning and that's really important as an AD carry. I mean, he hasn't randomly died once yet, which is good. I mean, he's, start. Venza have died once. No, but not randomly. Oh, uh, not randomly. Well, I, I feel wouldn't like say that he good. overextended under his own tower. You know what? Maybe a little bit, though, because I do feel I, like, you know, he was forced out by an ultimate. Maybe he could have just waited for Viking a little bit. But those are the small finicky stuff we can always look back at. Uh, but we obviously have the luxury of just flaming already. Oh, absolutely. There's nothing but flame here. We we don't do an analysis. You should, you should see our green room, really. It is. We're not I, very good to This each is other. the thing, right? Because I'm not usually in Berlin. I'm, I'm at home in my comfy chair usually when I'm yeah. casted. Come in, people just, it's just toxicity across the board, really. We are just very honest with each other backstage and we're very comfortable with each other, with a lot, which kind of allows ourselves to express the opinion uh, that, that we have. And you know, it's all in good fun. We're good people, all of us, I think. Well, we are talking about comfort, there are some people who are comfortably sitting over on the desk who are just going to take us through what they thought of the first part of this game. So we're going to throw it over in that direction and see what they have to say. I love you, Archero. He says that. I know, that I, I, I've been crying, actually, often. Yeah. Like, like, he's, he's just a horrible person, Google. The, oh, my. So oh, I was not expecting was that. I love him, really. He's great. <laughs> what the, what the, he also said, like the flip he also I said, keep my toes. He also said, we're good people. Most of us. Yeah. <laughs> Most of us. I mean, but... me, so no. And okay. Yeah. Dusty versus Riddle. First game so far. A lot of aggression coming in from the Voldy Bear Viking to the top side. They're trying to shut down their mouth fight. But you were saying something. I don't know if we have, like, maybe we can ask production for the drafts as well. But I felt like both drafts are just so very well curated, right? Because from one side, from Dusty, you've got a lot of backline dive uh, with the Volibear, the Na, the Akali. You've got the Jinx Rocket <laughs> later on and the Nautilus. Yeah, so everyone wants to go in. But I feel like on a 5v5, both teams have ways to defend versus each other. I feel like... The, the Riddle composition that was curated, it is such a great uh, zoning composition. You know, the Aurelia ultimate can zone, uh, the Rumble carpet can zone, you have the Malphite zoning with the ultimate, mm. the set that can take one of the three threats, you know, away from the Jin. And obviously, like, when you have champions like Jin, who can literally play from his fountain and do damage, um, you feel very confident playing into four melees that will be diving into you. Yes, as long as you have Flash, as long as you've got a Gale Force. And you're still there, like, the Flash did get Benny, did eventually get out, but it cost him a lot. And... I think a lot of these mid and late game fights are going to be around how safely can Rumble and Jin play to get down the key skills before inevitably someone tries to dive them. And can they get peeled for? And what is slow Q getting done in the meantime? And I don't necessarily think slow Q is going to have the easiest time mm -hmm. in team fights either. While he's got great angles for hitting a good ultimate. There's a lot of really good CC to just stop him in his track. You don't get a blade dance everywhere when Nar just hits every button and stuns you in place. When Nautilus gets to just basically passive auto attack you and stuns you in place. It gets challenging from there. Before we move on, I would like to tell you all that a situation has occurred, but the production 
is capable of solving it. So we will be able to resume with the game in a couple of minutes. So stick around with us. Obviously, it's the first game. We still haven't seen team fights. We still need to get to that point. That's what I wanted to get, yeah. So when you're thinking of team fights, the first thing that comes into your mind is like, we have a jinx. Yeah. yeah. We have yeah. a jinx, so we have the upper hand in team fights because we've got the STA hyper carry on our back line. On the other hand, you have got Father Chan on his gin, right? He's more of like a facilitating AD carry slash, yes, I'll do some damage, but mainly I'll give you the distance that you want to play the game. Now, my question here is, if Riddle are successful in assassinating with mm -hmm. the AP Malphite plus carpet, the Jinx, if they manage to cut off guard Venza, I think even if you have to trade your Jin, like if your Jin gets dived by Akali and Sats and you trade the two, I feel like Riddle is much more comfortable playing their fight without the Jin than uh, Dusty is without having the hyper carry from Jinx. It's still an early game, so we still need to see how this game is going to develop. And now let's make a test. I love you, Goldberg. You're a really good friend. Take it over. Oh, he's so nice. No, I see don't love him too. Honestly, Archer has been great working with. You know, I'm I'm always sitting around in the green room, and he's always the first one to start preparation and like the last one to leave. He he, he was here. F artwork. We came in. Me and Initialize came in a little bit early, and he was already sitting there with his little cue cards ready to prepare and organize. And he, I think he was starting. You know, the fun yeah. thing is as well when we don't do best of fives, we don't actually have to do a post game as an analyst, so we can kind of chill around. But Ashram has to be the only one prepping, actually doing the interview questions. What a nerd am I? Really? I actually know, I know, right? This guy has to work <laughs> like the whole hard, time we're the here. Hell? He, he, he hasn't fought his career through, clearly. But we are back onto the rift, as you can see. Same game, 15 minutes in. Dusty hold the advantage, but Riddle holding the line for now, at least. And the game is definitely not out of hand. Yeah, but let's have a look at that now, because you have a very long top lane you can push in. And mm. every time Aleph pushes this top lane in, it gives so much downtime for Dusty, where they can just move around. You want to take away the Crocs? You can do that. You want to get more aggressive vision? You can do that. You want to threat a dive towards the mid lane, who's already low because you had a Herald? You can do that. So just the fact that Aleph is this far ahead, and he continuously will be, because Malphite will never challenge now inside. Well, that's a, that's a fawn in Riddle's side at the moment. Two levels up as well, which is not super pleasant. <laughs> oh, it must be. This. But Malphite is the kind of champion that could, in theory, move around and get something going elsewhere. A At big old... some point, it will have to be like, well, I'm not getting anything done topside anyway. I'm just going to exactly. join the fight and lose waves because I'm behind anyway. Well, he's going to lose waves if he's up there. <laughs> yeah. the issue. And I mean, there are no good options when you're 0-3-0 zero, zero down. As Dusty decides to go for a good option, Second Herald has been signed up by the NAR and he's going to be able to be helped out there by Viking FGG just getting that vision control. Like you talked about, getting a little bit deeper is what we wanted to see from this. Side. Yeah, but now we also want to see Riddle try and respond a little bit. Yeah, take is. control of the bot side instead. You see a lot of members from Dusty on the top side. This is your window to get aggressive. Enza, Benza. we talked about you not giving up necessarily yeah. unnecessary kills, and there it is. MC needs to be careful now as Backlund dances on through. Slogan grabs a kill on the other side, though, and now he's diving back towards the Akali. Ducked back, but gets over the wall. Backlund helped out by Nukes there, will get away, but the fight continues. Backlund actually does get away because of the snipe from the curtain call. Aleph trying to find his way out. will be able to do so as Vikings there as well. He did pick up the Rift Herald. Very, very even fight, but I think Riddle shaded it. Dusty plays right into Riddle's hand. We were just talking about it. Okay, multiple members of Dusty on the top side. Riddle will go in towards the bot side. And that's Dusty right. You have to respect this. You just got a Rift Herald. You got an objective for free. Back out. All Riddle, realistically speaking, should have been getting here was Raptor Camps and Crocs and damage on the bot side. That should have been the trade. Vence, on the other hand, was like, how about you get a kill? How about you get back into the game? And then Slow Q finally starts picking up some kills as well, which is probably nightmare scenario mm. for Dusty because he is the guy you don't want to get ahead in the mid-game scenario. I mean, Aurelia being able to die through these fights, and that was one of the first real skirmishes we've seen, and it went all the way of Riddle. The question being, obviously, the Nile wasn't there, the Volibear wasn't there until the very end. If this front line can do something else, maybe it's a different team fight scenario, but Riddle have been handed a very comfortable lifeline. Bot lane, we're gonna see the Rift Herald picked up, though. Yeah, finally coming through, and now with sight lane pressure, with an Akali, with a Nar, 
uh, in top and mid, which is something you can build up in maybe a couple waves, let's say five late waves later into the game, you can start moving that pressure into the mid lane and you can try and take care of the last one. Um, but Riddle right now, while the reset is coming through from Dusty, they have an opportunity to start clearing out some of the vision uh, in the bot side river towards that Drake, because remember, they're already sitting on two Drakes, putting themselves in a soul point uh, wouldn't be all too bad. No, it wouldn't be bad at all. Especially, it's a mountain, so it's not going to be that big flashy wing condition necessarily. But it does make these fights much, much easier for them because they've got those extra resistances and the shield on top. And you can see Dusty moving in. They clearly know that they don't want to be giving over this opportunity for Riddle because while it's not a wing condition per se, Elder Dragon could certainly be just that. And if you've got the advantage in those fights, I want to look at the different TP wards we have on the minimap as well, because okay. uh, in the red side jungle, there still is a ward that Kex can TP if he wants to get backline access. And currently, Dusty's vision towards their own jungle isn't really all that good. Well, there he goes. That was the opportunity. Guess they're going to have to take it head on. Elif's the one who's in the flank position. Watch them out fight as well, but FGG's going to be able to get onto MC. He's already pretty much gone. Just managed to get the death shot down before he gets the killed as Viking is on a spree with that one moving towards the Dragon and will be able to secure it. You've got to imagine because no one from Riddle is willing to contest. And it felt like for a short amount of time, Riddle actually had an opportunity to start the fight themselves, but they waited around just too long. That meant FGG finds a beautiful Hex Flash, finds MC and wants to jungle his down. Well, there's not much for the rest of Riddle to actually do about the situation and they'll have to forfeit the Drake. 3k gold lead for Dusty and FGG, very low HP bar but the rest of Riddle already scattered back to their base, and that mean, this means even more intel to Dusty. And I mean, slowing down that condition of getting that uh, Cloud Soul, or the Mountain Soul even, is really nice. You see Venz is giving some free time on this middle lane tower, and will be able to knock it down. So that's all the outers secured before the 20 minute mark for Dusty. The map is wide open for them now. Now it starts to become curious though, because we have the next step in the plan of okay. ending the game, of, of cleaning it up. It's too early to be starting up a Baron. You won't shred it. It's a little bit of a throw win condition because you don't want to get your magic resistance shredded by Baron's passive only for uh, MC to come in there with the equalizer, uh, which we're hoping Dusty will not do. So what they'll have to do instead is that they'll have to trim out the outer turrets in the side lane, try to pick up the 600 gold, try to take care of the opponent's jungle now that you have the extra pressure by no longer having uh, the mid lane tower, the safety for Riddle. And that's what we really want to see them attack. Every time a camp has respawn, that's where you want to go for it. You want to wait to the time where you finally pick up those items, and then you can start threatening the Baron, Baron later down the line. And I mean, we talk so much about how important it is to break open those towers to open up the map and to give themselves the opportunity, not necessarily to do the Baron, but to set up control around it. But having all of their towers themselves gives them some safe harbor to move back to. You know what my main concern is with a lot of players, though, is that they focus on, all right, let's open up the map. Let's let we, we try so hard to get to this point where Dusty's at right now. Hmm. Three outer turrets completely gone. And then they're kind of like, but, but what do we do now? We always say to open up the map, but it always feels like some teams are really struggling in terms of how they'll get away with it. This time around, Dusty, they're patient. They see no one on side, therefore, Venza, FGG, Viking, completely back off from the mid lane. Now that they don't see anyone in the mid lane, but their side waves are getting responded to, that's where the three Musketeers in the mid lane are starting to get proactive, trying to clear out the vision. So they're doing exactly what they do here. Be patient, don't rush anything. I know it feels bad in League sometimes to not just always be on the aggression, but sometimes you can't allow yourself to do so. And I mean, playing it patiently, this is a good standard to set for the rest of this series, just going through the motions and saying, we're not going to give an opening to Riddle, because they've already done that once this game. Venza going into the jungle, bot when they were getting that second Rift held, completely gave Riddle an in, which they absolutely took. So now they know, right, we can't be giving Riddle options. These guys beat BT, uh, JDXL. You can't be giving them an inch because they'll take a mile and Dusty are not giving them that. They're controlling vision. So they're, they're not over pushing. They're looking for FGG who might have overextended slightly though as MZ and Vatican trying to get the damage down. Aleph is there building up the rage bar. Kex is there. It's a 4v2. If this fight kicks off in earnest, Aleph is about to go large but gets knocked back into the enemy team. And now he's in a lot of trouble. Gets a very nice stun, but it doesn't matter as the shutdown comes through. FGG will be able to slide out, but the curtain call is being used. Shot one and two. They both go wide. Three and four will not be in range, but it's a Good pick up for Riddle. Yeah, but why didn't they just attack mid lane as well? Vince had the full possibility to do so. Down towards the bot side, getting responded with a TP. 
Viking was trying to turn off the tower, did manage to do so. Kex has the ultimate available, so he could be looking for someone. Viking needs to be careful here as he's running him down, getting the damage through. He goes golden, but I don't know if that's going to save your life, Viking, as Backlund has to dance away, diving back on through, but I don't know if that's the correct decision as they both go down. Benza can't get the return kill with the ultimate. And just when we were saying that Riddle hadn't been given an opening, Dusty give them two. As soon as they got the first three out of turrets, I knew it was over for Dusty. That's why it starts becoming difficult playing that macro. And Riddle, they start getting creative. They hunt FGG for so long. They pick up the kill and then they still have to teleport. They still have the ultimate of Kex, which allow them to get aggressive here. And I gotta say, Dusty had the opportunity to attack mid lane here. He, currently, Venso is pushing in another wave, but he already did once before. He was already hitting the turret once, but then he started moving up towards the top side. So I think the decision, decision making here from Dusty just went down a little bit. And uh, if you're to vote, vote with you, um, again, after this game, this is definitely the situation you're having a look at uh, as to where it went wrong. Mm. And this is exactly what you were talking about, saying, look, we don't know how to get through this next layer of defense. Is MC going to lay down a red card, but looking for Venza can't quite catch him. The cleanse is used regardless, though. So that's a nice tool taken off the table for the Jinx. But Dusty needs to recollect themselves and think, right, the conditions are still the same. We've just given up a couple of kills. It's not too bad. Let's just try and break through. Aleph is still very strong on the top side, but slow Q can now match to an extent. As we get the fight in the mid lane, FGG needs to be careful. A lot of damage onto Nukes, though, as he's going to be one who's called out, blown up, as Viking secures the kill. Teleport coming off through, Major play things, but Viking wants to go back in. FGG is there as well. Back on the side, helps pick up MC. Is now looking towards Slow Q, who's also very low. He's diving on forward, manages to pick up one before he dies. As Fadigan runs for the hills, Kex won't be able to find a way out though and is caught and killed by the Nauseless. Aleph is running on through, gets another kill and a shutdown as Riddle are routed. 24 minutes into the game, that's an ace. One member can solo up to Drake, that might be Aleph, while the rest of Dusty, they can move their forces up towards the top side. Yes, they don't have a jungler, but there's still 15 seconds for MC before he gets respawned from the fountain. And it looks like they're just gonna skip the Drake, they're gonna take the big objective in the Purple Worm instead. Absolutely, gonna be able to secure this one. This is what they can use now. We talked about how we didn't know if they were gonna have the right tools to take down these inner towers. That's what First Baron was built for. Yeah, this definitely makes uh, matters a little bit easier for Dusty. Uh, one could claim so without getting too much flak. And now with the resets coming through, hell, they might even be a position to still run down Drake, take another fight if they want to. Let's see how it all happened again. It's Nukes getting caught off and then the combo of the Flame Chomper with FGG hooking Nukes back into it. Once it becomes a four versus five, it's just an incredibly deadly situation. And FTG once again finds the hook immediately on Slow Q as soon as he get as soon as he gets out that teleport. Once that happens, the rest of Riddle are just left to play retreat. But you can't really run away from an Aleph that's so fast on an R who's got the slows on his boomerang. And we're back well. into another fight immediately. Once again, it's Nukes, it's Deja Vu. He's gonna dive back through, but gets killed before he hits the ground. As another kill goes over, this time to Venza. And now Riddle are caught between a rock and a hard base. They're going to try and get up a nice Megalar onto two. The snipe from Venza for the double. Fatty Cam will be deleted as well. Slow Q goes down. Riddle with nowhere to go. How far can Dusty push here? Yeah, they can definitely push up towards those inhib turrets. I don't know if they're looking for an end currently. 30 seconds for Slow Q, 40 or 40 seconds for Slow Q, 30 for Fatty Chun. 20 on MC, I mean, hell, they might even look for it if they want to be cheeky about it, but I think the safe option here, 26 minutes into the game, is push this bot side turret, take the inhibitor, and go for the resets instead. I don't know, they look like they want to try and force it through for a second longer as Riddle have only got two members defended. Viking is there looking for the engage. They're going to be able to take out Nukes. He's already gone and so does Kex. He's taking so much damage. He's deleted. He looks like a tank, but not really as the Nexus Towers go down. MC lays out the red carpet, but it's going to be a victory replayed for Dusty as they pick up the first win of this series 26 minutes in. That's a short game for this meta. We usually uh, average around those 30 minutes. This time around, back-to-back -back team fights won from Dusty was enough to solidify that victory. And you kind of have to feel like the Riddle walked into that. Mm. Nukes got caught in the mid lane, turned into a four versus five fight that Riddle still decided to take. And then afterwards, they got greedy for that Drake. They wanted to put themselves on Soul Point. And I said it, with the Baron empowered recall, you get extra movement speed when you recall, you go fast down towards that Drake. Riddle once again routed and Dusty just pulling the trigger, saying we don't want to uh, risk uh, losing if we if we're moving into the reset timers. We just want to try and take it right here, and they they could. And I mean, realistically, Dusty did give openings, but we're not going to spoil that for you because we've got a desk that's going to break all of this down. So don't go anywhere. We'll see you in a few minutes.